Welcome back to the island of Maui, scene of the deadliest wildfire in modern American history. Fires that started seemingly without warning less than a week ago, and they spread very fast with the help of wind gusts up to 80 miles an hour, more than a mile a minute. And as we told you, the death toll now stands at 96. That's for now. Officials are warning that number could rise as searches and searchers make their way through thousands of destroyed and damaged buildings, finding what they can. The fires are mostly contained. That's the good news. But there is another danger to developing toxic fumes from melted plastic and metal, which could pose potential health, health risks for weeks. God, these pictures. Oh, boy. All right, we do move on for the moment to one of the island's most famous longtime residents. This is on the recovery side of things, Oprah Winfrey. She spent the past several days, along with many, many others, doing what she could to provide emotional comfort and physical aid to one of the hardest-hit areas. I went along with her to a local shelter. This was just yesterday where we were able to meet victims and also volunteers, including, and this is key, some people in both categories. We find her at the entrance of the biggest evacuee shelter in Maui County, still home to a thousand people five days after the fires and where Oprah has been quietly visiting survivors. She wants us to hear some of the stories she's been hearing. And since cameras aren't allowed inside, we find a spot to talk just outside the fence. If we were inside, what would we see? You would, would see people lined up, cots, 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 right next to each other. You would see people with all of their worldly possessions in, you know, like a small garbage bag. She introduced us first to Kanani Adolfo, who, despite losing some of her own family, has been a volunteer here from the very first night. I'm just a volunteer. I'm a nobody. I'm just part of the public. This is my county. I'm born and raised You're here. You're a big somebody, girl. Don't I'm, say that. I'm never leaving. What do the families need now most? For me today, every day is different. Yeah. I truly, I'm every day talking different. to my heart. The mental health is, for me, the children, the kupuna, the families, everything they've seen, everything they've gone through. The mental health is, is for me today, is my focus. Maintaining strength in the face of so much loss. She is one of many heroes and heroines. <laughs> many, but many. One of many, but this, this, is, this is who we are. This, she, she represents who we are Thank in this community. Thank you for your work. Next, Oprah returned with two sisters, both feeling lucky to be alive. Six hours in the water. We jumped to the ocean because we trapped. Yeah. They have nine family members in all inside the shelter. And yet, this is what I don't understand. Every time I've seen you and your family, your spirits are still so high. You all seem, you, you seem so okay, even yeah. on this now, the fifth day. What's yeah. happening? You know, our life is the blessings. That's all we're thankful for. Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, it's so sad. No more memories. All, everything we left. All, only in the heart. It's all that we bring in. And finally, Julius. What happened here? He says he heard his skin popping in the heat as he ran. At that moment, while I'm running, because I cannot see anything, it's all black. I thought I was going to die. He started praying, and then an opening. You ran, and this. you prayed, and you made it. And then, right, I go to the harbor. Right, I see those two ladies, old ladies. The, the old ladies cannot walk anymore. And they're crying because he cannot carry her. So what I can do, I carry her on my back. At the waterline, he eased himself into the waves. Another survivor of Lahaina. Though for him and for so many here, the memories are still fresh. You're so good. You're good. It seems like you don't realize it yet, but you're here. You're good. You've made it through. And with courage and community like that, Maui will make it too. You see entire families who've lost every single thing they have and they're living on the air mattress and a cot and a chair and they're still just grateful to have each other. So it's really, you know, the, the aloha spirit is about community and about family and we've seen this here in ways that, you know, most people never get to imagine what that really looks like. That is what that spirit looks like. I had a conversation outside of that shelter with a, a native Hawaiian woman who told me that the Aloha spirit will rebuild the world. It'll certainly rebuild Maui. 
Uh, and on the need uh, of the people there in the shelter, it is vast, it is emotional, the memories are fresh, guys, but there's also just really basic physical everyday needs. They, they need a cot, they need a blanket. One of the things that Oprah was able to do after she took her first uh, tour through there, had a visit with people, is she went to Costco, she went to Walmart, and she bought just basic necessities. That's the level that people are still working on right now. Yeah, she told me that she just went to get air mattresses, something as simple as air mattresses and shampoo, you know, all the stuff that we just so take for granted. But, you know, I, I knew Oprah would cl correct that woman when she said, I'm just a nobody. Anytime you were down there doing anything, you are so much more than you were. Everybody's a somebody in this moment. And it just brings out the good where people have lost everything or still trying to help others. Yeah. And we'll continue to hear it, more of those stories, exactly I'm right. sure, as the days go on, of everybody there helping each other. It is that community. You're right about that, Dana. And Tony, we'll check back in with you a little bit later. Thank you.